Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Week Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. So the last place we left off, I believe that Malcolm had a little bit of a bad dream, and it was of the ladies, and... Well, he's just gotta find a way to reconcile with that, uh, with the cow one, you know, Mary, the cow one, the cow girl. He's gonna have to show her how that's really done. Anyway, <clears throat> revering into some naughty territory. Anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please enjoy the video, and let's go. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay. <clears throat> Girl's faces are frozen in my mind as I'm jolted out of the nightmare. I wake up on the ground, trembling, covered in cold night sweat. My head aches from where it impacted the floor. My hands shake as I reach for my head, relieved to find that my skull is intact and there are no antlers or hooves. Marion's words from the dream reverberate in my mind. Which for you, which for you'll no go past ye. It means whatever is meant to happen to you will happen to you. We heard it many a time from Miss Alana before any of us received punishment for misbehaving. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Never question the teacher. Hmm. Yeah, I went to Catholic school. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I had some good times there. Of course, you had, had to have some good times, even in a horrible place. It's how you keep your, you know, that's how you stop yourself from going crazy. But yeah, no, Catholic school is not, not that much fun. A lot of people not being very holy. <laughs> a lot of people being holier than thou. I can't get back to sleep no matter how many times I roll over. Instead, I wake early and scrub my body over and over, trying to scour away the memory of the nightmare. Boar bristles tear away the entire top layer of my skin, and the burning sensation feels like a rebirth. Only after a third rinse of my face do I dare head back inside. I keep pinching my leg to assure my brain that I am awake and not still trapped in the dreamland. In the living area, Gran stands out at the stove, and I revisit the dream. Malcolm, good morning. Did you sleep well? Uh, no, actually, Gran, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Nightmares? I'm afraid so. Gran sets tea and sugar down on the table, sits across from me and takes my hand into hers. Malcolm, the worst is over. Don't let your heavy heart weigh you down. If I'd let that happen, I'd have left this earth right after your granddad. But there's still so much to live for. Gran, I appreciate hearing that. Even if it's not what you want, it's what you get. Then you learn to want it. Thank you, I... What is it? I have a funny question. Go ahead. There'll be nothing str stranger than I've heard on a Sunday morning in the pews. Well, th well then. I decide to be blunt. Have you heard any strange rumors about the McLeod family? Anything that would make you stay away? Gran doesn't even blink. Never! Really? Listen, my boy. I'll be clear with you. A few people were fussing about when the girl's mother passed away years back. They had heard Owen may have taken a liking to another woman in town. I couldn't tell you who, and perhaps was not the most doting father to those lovely young women, and he perhaps was not the most doting father to those young, young, lovely young women. But no, no doubts have I ever raised about the kindness of that family. A leaf washes over me, cleansing me strong, cleansing me stronger than any soap or bristles could. Grand's assurance has that power. It makes me happy to hear. Why in the world would you ask me that? Just idle chatter, Grand. You know those rumor mills. They never stop churning. Yes, indeed. I eat quickly, barely chewing my eggs, bid my grandmother a good day and get to work. Atop the stable's roof, the air, sun, and bracing wind cleanse my spirit. Hmm. Hmm. Beautiful. The sun winds through the sky as I diligently patch the holes. One by one, I lose myself to the blessed haze of simple manual labor. By noon, I have to remind myself to take a break. I don't want to repeat of yesterday's marathon, triggering another night of frightful sleep. Stepping cautiously down from the roof, I take one ladder rung at a time, then I address my options for the afternoon, fully aware that every decision I make in my life is now completely up to me. Uh, we're going to visit the McLeods and see if they need help. Pushing aside the nightmare, or maybe dwelling on it further, it dawns on me that I could spend the day helping the girls, or at least marrying with chores. She certainly has her hands full. If nothing else, I'm good at heavy lifting and beating rugs should need an ex and beating rugs should should she need an extra pair of arms. Choice. Yep. 
If anyone can tell me where I, uh, where all these other romantic interests are, I'd be happy to learn that because it seems like there's more a lot more to this game that I'm actually f finding. <laughs> Making my way over to their farm, I stop and idly pick a few pink and yellow wildflowers, gathering the thin stems in a bundle in my calloused fist. Marion's in the pasture, milking the cows. She bends over, picks up the milking stool and bucket, and strolls from one heifer to the next, wiping her hands on a calico apron as she goes. Ahoy there! Aye, Malcolm! Hmm. <laughs> it's good to see my wife. Hmm. <laughs> Her eyes catch the sunlight and reflect the light, the light hazy like uncut citrines. I get closer and reach for the pails. You need some help here, Marion. Well, I hate to trouble you, but I'd also hate to say no. It's nice to see you again, Malcolm. It's not a problem. My pleasure, even. I've come to offer my services in whatever capacity you see fit. Might not be amiable to mucking stalls, but I'd get it over with quickly enough if it needs doing. For a moment, I'm worried she is giving that some serious thought. I see. Well, well then, farmhand, if you wouldn't mind toting these buckets inside, you could empty them, then come back and help me refill them. Most certainly. <laughs> and we're crunching on over to the hut. <laughs> ah, it's such a warm, lovely day. Despite the heft and slosh of the milk pails, I pour the contents into glass bottles inside the house, and I'm back in a jiffy. Good lord, that thing is furry. Marion is standing by a hairy highland cow, running her hand along its long forehead and snout. She playfully teases its nose, and its head shakes as if preparing for a sneeze. Instead, it lets out a gentle moo and nuzzles her chest. All done. <clears throat> Sorry, Malcolm. <laughs> All done. And barely, lost, and barely lost a drop. I had an awful lot of sloshing. Hell, well, maybe a wee bit. <laughs> it's all right. As lovely as the weather is, I could stay out here milking all day. The old girls don't seem to mind. They're a courteous crew, for sure. They've never given me a difficult time. If only everyone were as docile as a dairy cow. The world would be a different place, maybe more peaceful. Less creative, that's for damn sure. An old girl lets out a moan as loud as the dickens. M maybe a little less quiet. Ah, Fiona, mind your manners. Malcolm, this is Fiona. Now, now, don't fret, you're in good hands. Oh, do you think you'll need a stool? I've only got the one. It takes me a moment to untangle the words meant for me from those meant for the heifer. No concerns, Marion. My pants have seen worse than a few grass stains, and it's a pleasure to meet you, Fiona. The cow's long bangs hide any reaction. Can it even see me at all through all that hair? <laughs> Milking, yep. I kneel down and reach under the fur of the teats. Marion was right about her cows being courteous. The heifer relaxes her udder and allows us to feel the pail in no time flat. <laughs> Between the two of us, Marion and I manage the chore efficiently, while sharing little to no banter. Marion is a hard worker, and not one to get distracted. I like this about her. She doesn't hide behind a veil of frivolity or disguise. She is who she is, and ought not to act like she isn't. It's a refreshing trait to behold in a young woman. A stark contrast to the latest, to the latest trend among ladies who'd act or ribald or feign interest in men just to curry favor. No. Marion is a true Scot woman. One of upstanding demeanor and poise. Say, Marion. The broken quiet startles the poor girl I'm milking, who tosses a hoof my way. I talk and Marion laughs. Malcolm, you've disturbed the lady's daydream. With an exaggerated motion, I wipe sweat from my brow. Thankful the hoof didn't connect, Marion laughs again, then looks at me, waiting for me to continue. What I started to say was, it may sound an odd thing to share, but I wanted to thank you for letting me help you out today. Morning of milking should be smashing a roof. How so? Yeah, here I am under the watchful eye of a friendly woman. At home, Hazel is a much harsher supervisor. Your horse? The same. We have the love-hate relationship. I see. Well, it's my pleasure. Rest assured that you've given me as much relief as you've given the gals in the field. Once these pails are full, how about I thank you with a cool drink? It sounds wonderful. <laughs> I can think of a couple other ways that you could uh, repay me. <laughs> Now, now, it's just PG-related stuff. By early afternoon, Marion and I bid adieu to the herd and head inside the homestead. It's uncannily similar to how I remember it from my youth and from my dream. I push the thoughts out of my mind and tell myself there's no reason to be concerned. Indeed, I won't be hard-pressed to find a more comforting and welcoming home. You have a beautiful place. It's just how I remember it. Oh, you're too kind. We've done our best to leave it just the way it was, so Father will have something familiar to return home to. It would be nice if you came back with a retinue of house staff, too. 
A pile of pots and pans waiting in the basin punctuates her point. Marion pours me a tall glass of cold water, then begins scouring the cookware thoroughly. Please, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Let's take a seat. Uh, I'm going to continue helping. Yes. Kind of love me some redheads. <laughs> the legs and back ache. But seeing Marion's industriousness urges me on. I pick up a towel and begin drying what she's washed. Marion looks over and blushes. Thank you, Malcolm. You know, normally my sisters would be here to help. Sometimes, when they can. But today, Jesse is working at the pub, and Grace has gone out to collect shells. Shells? Mm-hmm. She used to sell them on the market days when she was little. Do you remember? <laughs> that I don't. No. She did. One pence each. The villagers found it so adorable. A child selling flotsam just to gather enough money for licorice whips. Eventually, they simply paid her in licorice. Now she gathers the shells in her bedroom. Piles and piles of them. You'd think she was living on the ocean floor. My, the scent must be... Insufferable! Much like Grace... Oh, I shouldn't say things like that. I have so few others, nobody really, to complain about life's tiny tribulations. Please forgive my caustic tone. I really do love my sisters, even their seaside-scented oddity collections. I know you do, and it does you no know good to keep those complaints bottled up. I know as well as the next about the difficult behaviors of family members. Not your gran. Oh no, my mother. A very complicated sort. Probably not a conversation worth having on such a lovely day. I understand. It's all we can do to try to be good examples for them, no? I can't tell if that is sarcasm or genuine optimism. I laugh and find myself nodding. Either way, she laughs too as she sets aside the last pan. Come on, I have a few other odd jobs for you, Mr. Role Model. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. That's beautiful. Marion gathers linens and places them in washer bins out the back door. She tosses in handfuls of white powder and we get to work scrubbing clothes on the washboards. Now's as good a time as any to ask her about her other sister. So, how exactly did Jessie discover the world of flappers? Oh goodness, too many magazines. She started writing away for headpieces and feathered garb after seeing advertisements for such gaudy products. That and vinyl. She found a few records from a, for, my, for the gramophone nearly a year past. God only knows how. Mind you, I don't mind the tunes. I just don't share her enthusiasm for the culture. Too scandalous? Hardly. I've had it all such a boring state to share the same identity and fashion as so many other women. They call it liberating, but I don't think self-determination comes from following the pack. Actually, that's a pretty good point. It tends towards it coming from perform performing the doobies and from blah, blah. <laughs> Got some milk in my mouth. I tend, I tend towards it coming from performing the duties that make a house a home, calling it women's work, but when the woman is also doing the duties of a man, that is a real independence. She pauses, watching for a moment and blushes. I'm sorry, Malcolm. I'm on a bit of a tear now, aren't I? I don't apologize. Out here, there's more than enough responsibilities to go around. Gran was never one to shy away from either. It's an admirable ethic. I don't mean to imply that Jessie isn't a hard worker. She's at the pub day and night, and she earns so much, yet somehow nothing gets done. How will all that dosh, how that all that dosh get her fancy clothes laundered? The wet lumps of cloth in her hands certainly weren't scrubbing themselves. I see your point. You know, at first, I worried about her being out of out so late, all alone. Mulgair well, may be rough around the edges, but he's a real gentleman at heart, and sharp as attack. Jessie's in good hands. Yes, and I've learned she can take care of herself, too. She can be fierce when she wants to. <clears throat> Am I cloud able to take care of herself? We share a laugh. I suppose you're right, and truthfully, the extra money she brings home has made so much of a difference. I respect her tenacity, in spite of her lack of commitment to chores around here. Have you been struggling financially? I don't mean to be forward, but I can assure you that my grandmother has faced the same trouble. All of us have. Everyone in town. We get by, but money is scarce. Most of those who weren't snatched up by the recruiters left to find paying jobs in the city. I think of my parents leaving Grand behind. I try not to let my anger show. Marion's expression is falling as well. My sisters and I are lucky to be able to maintain the farm. The herd keeps us going. Is it your bread and butter? She stares at me, and I worry that my awful attempt to lighten the mood fell flat. I'm sorry, I... I love it! Oh, Malcolm, sometimes a terrible pun is just what the doctor ordered, and as it happens... Oh. Mm hmm. Okay, what are we gonna get? Her face brightens, and before long, Marion has me churning butter while she hangs the linens to dry. 
Karma, I think to myself with a chuckle. Up, down, up, down, the motion wakes the memory of an old churning tune, and I hum it, relentlessly working the plunger as the sun moves across the sky. By the time the contents have become a thick, creamy yellow, I built up quite a sweat. I scrape the butter out and squeeze it with my hands until the texture is just right. I press the butter into a pan, pour the buttermilk into a small bucket, and finally rendezvous with my taskmaster. She looks down at the butter, and I can't hide, can't hide her delight. Hmm, it's perfect. You're natural. I'm no stranger to the tar to the churn. Just as you've had to take on a man's duties, Grand's had me helping with the woman's work all my life. When it comes to down down to it, work is work, and it all needs doing. Considerably less doing now, thanks to your help. It's a team effort. Living in this vale, I want to offer support. I want to be of use. I can't thank you enough, but... She produces a small tin filled with soft, crumbly cheese. I can at least send you home with something nice. Trust that this is much better than the crowdy curds in town. I made it myself. Competing with the cheesemonger now. Your secret is safe with me. Thank you, Marion. It was a pleasure to be of help. If you ever need anything else, I'm just down the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She nods and looks like she might be about to say something else, but the moment stretches in silence. Before it can become awkward, I doff my cap and turn to take off for home. That sounds about right. Malcolm, uh, join me, or uh, us, for dinner tonight, if you can. Hmm? Oh. I turn and see Marion smile, still bright after a long and exhausting day. Uh, yeah. My muscles ache, but my body somehow feels energized and light as a feather. Of course. Let me just wash up and change into clean clothes. Her smile seems to grow even more. Perfect. Five o'clock? I'll see you then. <laughs> oh, this ought to be interesting. Dinner with Marion. Surprisingly, Gran is bundled up, napping by the fireplace when I get back home. I kiss her sleeping forehead and go to my room to ready myself for dinner. Five o'clock isn't as far off as I thought. After I've cleaned myself up, I put on fresh trousers and a crisp white shirt. Buttoning up, I take pause. Am I readying for a date? No, it's just dinner. With a friend. A beautiful female friend, yes, but just a friend. A neighbor. It couldn't be anything more, could it? My heart beats a bit, little bit faster. But I steady it with thoughts of food and drink, and assuredly good conversation with a lovely and intelligent woman. A kind and gentle woman. Hmm. Crivens, Malcolm, get a hold of yourself. Tousling my hair through my fingers, I chuckle and shake my wandering mind back to reality, reminding myself that her sisters are joining us too. A bit crowded for a date. There's no sense in getting worked up over it. After all, I've had my fair share of work today already. Tonight will be all about putting work behind us. Marion and me, both. The sun edges closer to the horizon, and I check my pocket watch. Uh-oh, I'd better get going. Nope. Alright, it's about time for a dinner. A lovely dinner with the ladies. Marion greets me, breathless at the door. Welcome back! Her smile is as bright as the sunset. Hello, my apologies for running late. Please, don't apologize. It's just so wonderful to have you here. Come inside! She busies herself, putting out plates of silverware. Putting out plates and silverware for two. My chest flutters a little, as with the S afternoon, her sisters are nowhere in sight. Is it just the two of us? Marion reads my mind. Unfortunately, my sisters are still out for the night. Truth be told, Grace is a bit skittish around new people, so I wouldn't doubt if she snuck out to see Jesse perform just to avoid you. Marion turns red. Oh my, that came out all the wrong way. No, no, I understand completely. I'm not one for large gatherings either. I forgive Grace or shyness. That is... that is putting it kindly. <laughs> Marion finishes with the table and turns to the counter. She seems a bit nervous and I, empath and I empathize greatly. Can I get you a bevy? Whiskey or a cider? Yes, thank you. Cider sounds ideal. She pulls out from underneath the cabinet a wooden cask half her own height. <laughs> Jessie has a lot of friends who give her all sorts of gifts. This one was particularly well received by us ladies. I see. Can I help with that? <laughs> I actually think I'm going to pause it in a moment, because I want the next episode to be focused on this dinner, because I feel like it's going to be a very, very important scene. We roll the cask out and latch the spout, and Marion pours out two tumblers of hard cider. At long last, we sit, as I balance the full glass in my hands. Alright guys, I'm gonna save it right here. 
dinner for two perfect place to stop it anyway guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and ring that notification bell to the next video i love you all i'll see you next time Bye bye